Hi everyone, I thought I'd share with you this afternoon an Inuit story. I thought that this might be a nice choice as Inuits have come into our work quite a lot recently, both with our school ties children, um, learning about Inuit life, and also with one of our notable Newport people who spent time living with the Inuits and also came back to the Isle of Wight and told people about them. Maybe he even told this story himself. The story I'm going to read for you today is called The Skeleton Woman. Once there was a lonely hunter who had caught nothing for many days. He paddled his kayak from cove to cove looking for fish without any luck until he came to a tiny deserted bay. Maybe my luck will change here, he thought as he went ashore and built himself a snow house. When it was finished, the hunter paddled out to the middle of the bay and lowered his fishing hook deep into the water. All afternoon he caught nothing, and as the sun began to set, he feared he would spend another hungry night without any supper. But just when he was about to give up, the fishing line jerked. At last, cried the hunter, gripping his rod. This feels like a huge fish. It will feed me for a week. And with a mighty heave, he pulled his catch out of the water. To his horror, it was not a fish on the end of the line. It was a skeleton, draped in weed with sea worms writhing in its eye sockets and crabs clinging to its ribs. The hunter screamed with terror. He dropped the rod. Shaking with fear, he scrambled for the paddle and rowed towards the shore as fast as his arms could pull him through the water. But the skeleton was still hooked to the line. It clattered behind the kayak with its arms flying and its legs rattling as if it was running over the waves. When he reached the shore, the hunter leapt out of the kayak, grabbed his rod and ran towards the snow house, too frightened to look behind him. The skeleton followed, rolling its gruesome skull from side to side and snatching at the air with its bony fingers. Panting for breath, the hunter reached the snow house and dived into the entrance tunnel and crawled inside. <sighs> Safe at last, he gasped. He crouched on his bed in the darkness, still trembling with fear at what he'd seen. Taking a deep breath, he calmed himself and thanked the spirits for his narrow escape. But when he lit his oil lamp, the hunter saw he was not alone. The skeleton lay, jumbled, a heap of bones on the floor. The hunter froze. The skeleton didn't stir. Its bones lay tangled up in the fishing line a knee inside the rib cage, a foot over the shoulder and the arms cradling the skull. For a while, the hunter was too afraid to move. But as he gazed at the still, solemn face in the lamplight, a deep sadness came over him. He crept close and touched the skeleton's hand. He gently lifted the skull and stroked its cold head. Before realising what he was doing, the hunter began to draw out the fishing line, untangle the bones, laying them out one by one as a body should peacefully lay. And while he worked, he sang a soft, mournful song. When he had finished, the hunter saw that the skeleton was a woman. He covered her in warm seal skins. Who was she? he wondered. And why did she lie at the bottom of the bay? Feeling tired from his ordeal, he climbed into bed and was soon asleep. As the hunter slept, he dreamed and a tear ran down his cheek. 
slowly. The skeleton woman turned her head. She pushed back the covers and crept over to the hunter, bringing her face close to his. She caught the salty tear in her mouth. She then slipped a hand inside his chest and pulled out his heart. The skeleton woman beat the hunter's heart like a drum. She played the rhythm of life and she began to sing. She sang for her flesh to return, for her eyes to see the sunrise, for her feet to dance, her hands to sew fine boots and her belly to grow a child and for her own heart to love. All night the skeleton woman drummed and sang the song of life and when that song made her whole she slipped the hunter's heart back inside his chest. When the hunter woke next morning, he saw the beautiful woman lying beside him. My luck has truly changed, he marvelled, and he thanked the spirits, for he knew he would never be hungry or lonely again. I do hope you enjoyed our story this afternoon about the skeleton woman, and uh, we'll see you for another story again soon. Thank you. Bye bye.